Hello, today we're going to discuss uniform circular motion and centripetal force. Uniform circular motion is what we call an object's motion when it's traveling in a circular path but at a constant speed. So it's not speeding up or slowing down, but its direction is constantly changing. And we know that's one of the ways an object can be accelerated. We'll keep that in mind here for a minute. Okay? We talk about uniform circular motion because we're concerned about the speed that an object may have. Okay, so we look at our equation for speed, we know that's equal to distance over time. And there are several distances that are important on circles. One, probably the most common answer, will be the radius, and that's the distance from the center to the edge of the circle. Okay, it'll be the diameter, which is twice the distance. And if we're talking about traveling in a circular path, we're concerned about the distance it takes to go around the circle. And that is called, of course, the circumference. Okay, so we're going to look at this idea, the fact that it takes one circumference around, when you take when you go around a circle one time, you're traveling a distance of one circumference. So to find the speed, we're going to divide the circumference by the time it takes to go around one time, and that is called the period. Okay, when you use capital T to represent the period, because um, it still is a time. Let's write that up here so we remember. So period is the time for one lap, okay? The Earth's period of revolution around the sun is 365 days, one year, okay? And that's the time it takes the Earth to go around one time. So the period of revolution for any object traveling in a circular path is just the time it takes to go around at one time. You can measure it in any time unit, okay? So if we expand out our circumference, we get 2 pi r over the period, and that is going to be an expression that you can use at this point to find an object's speed. 2 pi r over the period. This is the distance traveled one time around divided by the time it takes to go one time around. All right? We just said a second ago that an object is accelerating when it's traveling at a uniform circular motion because its direction is constantly changing. And if we know an object is being accelerated, Therefore, force must be applied. And we call the net force that acts on objects traveling in circular paths the centripetal force. Okay, the word centripetal comes from the Latin. It means center, seeking. And it is the net force that an object experiences as it travels in a circular path. Okay, it is not an applied force. It will never be on your free body diagram. Okay, it is the result of various applied forces. Okay, friction. If you're traveling in a car around a circular path, you're in a circular path but your car is not sliding, friction, okay? If you're swinging a ball around on the end of a string or a bucket with water in it on the end of a string, tension. Uh, if you're sitting on a roller coaster that's going in a vertical loop or your back is to the wall of a Gravitron, the normal force is pu pushing you toward the center of the path. And if you're dealing with a vertical loop at all, we know that gravity is a force that always acts vertically. And so gravity will be a force that is playing a role in that centripetal force, okay? The centripetal force or the net force is always directed toward the center of the path that you're on, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, the equation for centripetal force is one that we're not going to derive. You're more than welcome to look it up. It involves a lot of trig, and we know how much we all love trig. And that is that the centripetal force an object experiences is equal to its mass times velocity squared over the radius of the path. And this velocity we're looking at is the linear velocity, sometimes called the tangential velocity. Okay, that's probably the word that we'll use most is tangential, because this is the speed at which the object would fly off in a line tangent to the circular path if uh, the friction went away or the tension went away or the normal force or whatever. Okay, so the tangential speed, not any kind of uh, rotational speed, which we'll look at later on. Um, and remember, this is the net force. Okay, so the, where you will see this equation is if you make a sum of the forces acting on the object, it will come after your second equal sign. Okay, so mv squared over r will be your net force. Okay, remember this is just a special form of ma over here. So this is called the centripetal acceleration, v squared over r. All right, so just a little aside there for you to remember. A very common word in popular writings is centrifugal force or centrifugal force. Okay, this comes from the Latin meaning center 
fleeing force. Okay? It is not a force. Sometimes it's called the fake force. Sometimes it's called an imaginary force. But it is not a force. It is an object's inertia. Okay, we know from Newton's first law of motion that objects tend to stay at rest or tend to move in a straight line unless acted upon by an outside force. Okay, so all objects will want to continue in that straight line. Let's make a circle here real quick. Okay, so let's say that you're in a car that's going around a circle. And the car starts turning left. Your body is already moving straight, so it wants to continue moving in the straight line. Okay? But the door of the car is going to push you in the circular path. Okay? So that would be what some people call the centrifugal force, where you want to fly off in a straight line. Well, there's no force that causes you to fly off in a straight line. It's just how you're already moving, and we know from a, the law of inertia, that's how your body wants to continue to move. Okay? So centrifugal force is not real, no matter what Faith Hill says in her song. Let's do an example real quick. A 20 kilogram bucket is spun by a string in a vertical circle that has a radius of 2 meters. If its speed at the bottom of the circle is 10 meters per second, what is the tension in the spring and the string at that moment? Okay? So we're going to have a bucket of water. We know it's traveling in a circular path. And so because we know it's in a circular path, that's our clue that this is going to be have a net force of uh, centripetal force on it. Okay, we're going to use our centripetal force equation. We're going to treat this like we would any other force problem. We're going to draw a free body diagram to start off with. And in our bucket of water, we have the force of tension pulling it up, and the force of gravity is pulling it down. Okay, we know that our net force is going to be pointed toward the center. So from that, what's going to be greater? The tension, which is acting up toward the center, or the gravity, which is acting down away from the center. Exactly right. The force of tension has to be greater than the force of gravity. All right? So now we're going to set up our summation just like we normally would. Again, nothing has changed from what we've done with forces in the past. So the forces acting on our bucket will be Ft minus Fg. And the only thing that's going to be different is that our net force is now going to be the centripetal force. Okay? So Ft minus Fg equals Fc. Again, notice, FC is not on our free body diagram. It's nowhere over here. It's not an applied force. Okay? The question is asking us to determine the tension. Okay? So that's the one that we're going to keep as a variable, and we're going to start plugging in our values otherwise. So FT minus FG, which we know is mass times acceleration due to gravity, equals centripetal force, MV squared over R. Okay? So now we're just going to evaluate, plug in our values. So Ft minus 20 kilograms times G equals 20 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared over 2 meters. Okay, so we're going to whip out our calculator. We're going to plug in our values. And 20 times, you can make this either 9.8 or 10. It doesn't matter. So either 196 or 200. And then 20 times... 100 or 10 squared is 2,000 divided by 2 is 1,000. So the force of tension, once we rearrange that, is going to be 1,196 newtons. Okay, which is greater than it would be if the rope were at rest. Okay, if the bucket was not moving, the force of tension upward would simply be the force of gravity of the object. So remember that when objects are traveling in circular paths. There must be a force applied to them that changes its direction. And in this case, that force is a thousand newtons more than it would be if the bucket were simply at rest. Okay, so don't forget that stuff. Always remember when you solve these problems that if it's a circular path, the net force in that direction, if it's a vertical circle, the net force is centripetal force. If it's a horizontal circle, the net force would be the centripetal force. But remember that the net force has to be Fc. Thanks.